Well, welcome everybody this evening. We have no. okay, no public comment. Okay, welcome in. Yeah. And you have a son there. I did. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, the there being no public comments, uh, we'll start right out with the consent agenda for the minutes, the appropriations, uh, Lake Cabin Transfer ITO. Zero. 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 Okay, it looks like I thought I didn't think it quite looked like enough. And G seven. License to sell malt beverages for Leisure Oil Company and raise apple market. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. We moved and seconded to approve this consent agenda. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries six zero. Thank you. All business CTS group update. So they've been here working. They have the armory done, the fire station's done. They're currently at the street department working there, putting in the radiant heat. Um, the water meters, I think when we met, they were back ordered because of coronavirus. So they're expecting to get those November, the week of November 30th, and then start on December 7th installing those. Um, they're planning to work six, 10 hour days. And then they'll have the break for the holidays and come back. Um, and they're, they're planning on having everything done with the water meters and training and all that by January 22nd. So but we've got all the training and stuff set up with them, G Works and Neptune for the gals here in the office and then Derek and his crew for running the new software. Okay. So okay. that's all I got on that. That's that really, unless there's any questions. Any questions? Okay. Moving on, new business, City Lake uh, Committee recommendation of variance request for I-35. Page 43. All right. <coughs> the Lake Committee uh, makes a recommendation to approve a variance request of 23 foot to the 90 two foot setback established by the original cabin for the construction of cabin with a covered deck. And that's on page 43 in your packet. And Keith and I know Mark went out and looked at it. Yeah. Um, so if you guys have questions, they can probably answer those for you. Anybody have any questions? I see here that it's, uh, won't have any interference or access interference. Yeah, they got all the signed letters from the neighbors and everybody was good with it. Um, so they're tearing this cabin down and building yeah. a new one. Okay. And it's moving it back evidently a little bit. Well, they, they actually uh, turned it a little, and one of the reasons they turned it, and Larry will be familiar with this, you get it, the property to the south, they share a driveway kind of that comes down off the hill, right. and if they put it square with the lot, it'll block that driveway and it will encroach on the neighbor and then the neighbor won't be able to get to the front of his place so that was why they all worked together and this was the best solution they turned the house a little bit to the north and that opened that driveway back up and kept the, the easement open between right. them. it is a very tight spot by it is very there. tight yeah and we spent a lot of time out there with everybody working through it and, and the one neighbor that we got concerned with is totally on board because and that's the one in the mm -hmm. south and she's very supportive of it because they do they all work through it together and so okay. so i said i missed it so it's extending how much out into the commons area then? no it's going it's it's actually going to be closer to the lake instead of Oh, I see. It's not an extension. I, it's, I it, they're just that. trying to make it fit the best they can on their foot. Yeah, what, what happens when they demo it? Anything that was non conforming goes away once they demo oh. their cabin. So then they're required to go just like it was a brand new one from scratch, which means they have to be 100 foot back from the lake. Okay. And we run into this with numerous cabins out there. And in most cases, it fits a lot fine and doesn't interfere with anyone. There's I see. Okay. Been a few that the councils decided not to, but very few. Okay. All right. Thank you. I looked at what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay. The... <laughs> Looks very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a real pretty. Really place. pretty cabin. Yeah. 
Okay, any other questions? Do I hear a motion? I would make a motion that the council accept the Burns request to the lake frontage setback for their new cabin and covered deck. Do I hear a second? I second it. Okay. Motion to it's been moved and seconded to approve uh, the City Lake Committee's recommendation variance for request for I-35 for the lake frontage um, setback and the deck. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Okay. Utilities Committee recommendation. Okay. And then at this time, um, I would like to appoint Jesse Pavic to Water Department Apprentice at a pay rate of $14 an hour. This appointment will be contingent on passing a background check physical and drug and alcohol screening. And I would welcome a, a, an approval of that recommendation. So no. Okay, and second it? I think I've got those backwards. But, Burn on Keith. Okay, yep, that's what I've got to so. Okay, any uh, other questions or anything? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Okay, Jason, do you have anything tonight for government bodies? No. Okay, Sharon? No, and this is probably the shortest council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> Councilman Burner. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Larry Seacrest? Nothing this evening. Okay. Uh, Keith? For fear of sounding like a broken record, I do <laughs> encourage everybody to heed the warning that the medical people have put out. I think. Uh, it's imperative that everybody do the best they can. I think everybody's done great. And the concern of going into holidays, everybody be safe. So. Okay. So I got it. Yeah, I would concur with Councilman Wessel. We are uh, not going to be spending the holidays with our children uh, for Thanksgiving just because of what's going on in this world right now. And I would. Um, I would encourage everybody to don't drop your guard, stay safe. I will say too that Nick informs me that we have our first memorial tree application. Yep. And so the program has already started. So I hope, awesome. we, hope we continue on with that. I did have one thing. Does anybody know why the station's closing? She got a different job. She did a job with another company here in town. I'm not sure which one. Somebody told me. So that, it just has to do with a better. She gets to work Monday through Friday and have nights and weekends off. So this is the, I, would, the I, would, I would guess that would be yeah. the reason. Yeah. Um, but she's working for going to move over and work for a company. Mm -hmm. It is for sale. I understand. So, oh, it is. Yeah. That's I like that place. So, mm. In price, man can buy it. In price subs. Book or subs, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then my, my final thing there is uh, Nick informs me that we, we got permission from Evergy to hand, hang our new banners. Great. Um, <laughs> with the Santa Fe Trail logo on them, so those will be being put up around town hopefully in the near future. Yep. So that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. The only thing I would do is uh, bring the council uh, up to date on the action you took last uh, meeting regarding the uh, contractor that we uh, rescinded the agreement on. Through his attorney, he uh, filed a request for reconsideration to the uh, KDOT uh, uh, attorney who was acting as our agent. Uh, she visited both with Nick and I, and we we told her there, were, there was no indication the council had any different position and so she in turn informed the attorney that, the, that it would stand. It was interesting in reading the attorney's letter, he was, really wasn't making any demands other than asking for reconsideration, which I thought was a positive thing. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. 
probably felt he had no leg to stand on. He did. Be my guess. Yeah. Oh, and that was professional of him to be. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Nick. One thing I got. Uh, you may see Johnson Service Company around town. They are here relining the sewer lines that we approved <coughs> earlier this year. Um, so they're starting on that. I'm going to get as much done as they can, and then they'll be back in the springtime to finish what they can't get Excellent. done. Excellent. That's so, great. Yeah, and I put a notice in the paper um, about it, letting people know they're going to put door knockers on people's doors that may be affected by them knocking on the sewer, so people will be notified. Okay. So, with that, that's all I got. Okay. Oh, last thing, we got finally you got the carriage grant stuff i got it all submitted and it got approved so here in the next couple of weeks we should get the money for the businesses here in town and be able to distribute that okay. um, we want to talk about a grueling process in order to get that done thousands upon thousands of pages of documentation lots of hours good job man. so but Thank we finally you got it all done so yeah. um, very good you're doing a good job mm -hmm. appreciate that that's 132,000 dollars that'll go out to the people in town so. Yep. Not each person, but total. I think there's nine, nine or ten businesses, I can't remember. Nine. nine businesses that will receive the money. Okay. So, so they're the ones sense. that apply and they're the ones that qualify. But I think we had 11. One didn't qualify because it was a nonprofit. One didn't qualify because they made too much money. Um, and the other nine all qualified. Right. So, but that's all that applied. That's all that applied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you have to meet the low to moderate income, you have to have, you can only make, make so much money at your business. I see. In order to qualify, and a lot of the businesses in town make above the threshold to even qualify. And it's a lot of paperwork. It's really hard. grueling. You have to have a lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of paperwork. I mean, well, I'm glad it's there for them. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, that's great. Well, the mayor helped me with it, so I had, I we had that here to help it. So, but I didn't do it all on my own. That immense computer trouble with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's actually working right now, so. Good. Good. I don't say that you laugh. turn on tomorrow. Um, it is 2020, isn't it? <laughs> I would like to, uh, uh, do you have anything else? No, nope, I'm done. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to welcome Susan Harris, our Chamber Director. Director, is that what you're Interim. 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 Okay. <laughs> this evening. Um, and along with that, um, I would like to say that we would really like to make sure that we're encouraging everybody to shop local businesses very slow right now. A lot of businesses are hurting. In fact, I've had several contact me this week and ask me if that grant's still available. And I told them, it's, unfortunately, it's gone and closed. The county does have one. Spark. Uh, Sparks. And so I've been, you know, referring them to the county. Um, I think that will be the norm. I was reading an article in Topeka. There's a lot of small businesses there hurting, and the Topeka doesn't have the money to help half of them. That's just um, really, yeah. really sad. Yeah. Um, we have kind of started a little campaign called Here For You. We're working with the story media, and so we'll be doing a few little things like some postcard things and some stuff to go out to, you know, we're just trying to kind of encourage people to shop local and, and invite a few people in to shop, just people that usually come, like a customer that's here for the lake or whatever. So anyway, we'll be working with that. Um, I'm working with Nick on that a little bit with Deidre and Lindsay. Okay, and then the other thing is, is uh, we are hosting if things go right, we are going to be hosting the symphony in Flint Hills this year mm -hmm. in the same place that we hosted it several years ago when we did it. Mm -hmm. And we're needing to do some sprucing and spiffing up on Main Street. We've been asked by the symphony committee. And so, you know, we'll be coming probably with some requests for some sales tax grant money eventually. I'm going to talk to the committee and see what they need. And, you know, it's mostly downtown, you know, seating that's broken. Planters, our planters are getting really bad. Um, some of that kind of stuff. So I imagine that the city will have to help with that. The Pride Group will probably do some of it, but the city probably might have to pitch in and do a little bit of help with that. So uh, we, that's been 15, 16 years ago that we did that. So it's time to step it up and do a little bit more, maybe her replace. Yeah, I think you guys can argue about what the new planners are going to look like. So yeah. I'll stay out of that one. Actually, <laughs> actually we have a Blue water barrels. <laughs> I think what would be cool is like a piece of limestone that has the center of it bored out that mm -hmm. you can plant flowers in. That's what we're kind of talking about. So it kind of follows the Riverwalk theme. You know, um, I think that will look a little bit like Riverwalk. And so we've got some ideas, maybe even some of the seating, you know, down there. That's the one two cents I'm going to give on that. So. <laughs> well, that's all you get to. <laughs>
you're going to be working with a lot of girls and women. They're not going <laughs> to. They're going to say, "Fine, thanks for, thanks for your input. We're done." <laughs> so anyway, I think it's an important thing, Mayor. But yes. I will remind everybody that there'll be multiple events next year besides oh, yeah. the symphony. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of a request that has been made by the symphony to you know do some right. producing. And uh, yeah, we're well aware. Of being it'll in the be it'll benefit and, the whole. Yes, yeah. yes. The whole the goal is for mm -hmm. all of the events. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mark, does the does the Santa Fe Trail deal? What happens if we're still fighting all this come next spring? Well, there's been a little conversation, maybe just pushing everything back to 2022. You know, I, I saw a day where Mardi Gras has been canceled for 21. Mm. Oh, so uh, yeah. and Mardi. Our uh, first, our first scheduled event is in May, which is an outdoor bluegrass festival. Mm -hmm. So we kind of pushed things back. Yeah, we eliminated the first. Three months, four months. Yeah, right, hoping that there, say, you know, maybe the vaccine would be. Up I think and this around. March is about when they said it should be available, so that's what they say now. Mm -hmm. that be well, and hopefully by then, outside events maybe will be yeah. more acceptable. I don't know, but yeah. we just have to. You and know. really, every every event that we have scheduled is an out, outside mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. throughout the year. That's so, a um, thing. Yeah. you know, and. Uh, yeah, the one in September, which is our signature event, Rendezvous at Council Grove, which includes Voices of the Wind People. I've been working on a wagon show over in uh, the post, uh, the Council Oak Park, and I've been able to get some pretty big names in in that to come. So it's going to be a it's going to be a big weekend. Um, let's just hope COVID is a thing of the past by then. If not, I guess or we'll be talking. With it in a bit yeah, way. we'll be uh, <laughs> doing something different. I don't know. Yeah. No. I'll keep our fingers crossed. That's gone, or almost gone. Okay. Well, there being nothing else, I would accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll Set. second it. Okay. All those in favor? Motion carries six zero. Thank you. I still think it's the shortest council meeting we've ever had.